Ubuntu 26.04 LTS drops April 23rd, 2026, right? Canonical promises five years, five years of stable enterprise-grade support with GNOME 50 and new default applications. The roadmap talks about accessibility improvements, TPM-backed encryption, and unified software management through App Center. Sounds like the perfect Linux distribution for Windows refugees fleeing end-of-life deadlines. I spent four days investigating what this LTS release actually delivers versus what the marketing glosses over. What the roadmap doesn't mention. It changes how you'll experience this operating system. I mean, I don't know it yet, like... Coffee, spelled backwards, is EFOC, which is funny, because until I've had my coffee, I don't give EFOC about anything. Same energy, buddy, because until I've studied this thing, I don't give EFOC about anything they say. The first thing that hits after installation? Ubuntu Pro advertisements. Every single apt update command displays messages about extended security maintenance packages you could get with a Pro subscription. The software updater shows Ubuntu Pro updates constantly, even though you haven't subscribed. Your login message of the day reminds you about Pro. Three separate nagging systems. Three built into the base installation. Catch me outside, how about that? Users report spending hours finding workarounds to disable these advertisements. The package responsible? Ubuntu Advantage Tools, which Canonical deliberately made a required system dependency so you can't easily remove it. Their official justification? Revenue generation to fund development. <laughs> Firefox comes forced as a snap package starting from Ubuntu 22.04. Install the traditional dev version manually? The system automatically upgrades itself back to the snap version without asking. Users discovered that Snap Firefox breaks the file browser with scaling issues on high DPI displays and theme mismatches. The sandbox prevents accessing files in certain directories. Download dialogs look completely different from the rest of your system. Every Firefox update triggers a pending update message that won't automatically apply when you close the browser. You have to manually run terminal commands. One user called it, get this, like a mad, blind, enraged elephant rampaging through a puppy nursery compared to the traditional package. I mean, come on. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something! Let me tell you something! <laughs> okay, sorry. Let me tell you something about their telemetry opt-out. Listen to this. Ubuntu collects data through four separate tools. Four by default. Popcon tracks installed packages. Ubuntu report sends hardware information. A port uploads crash reports. Whoopsie handles error. Reporting. The opt-out process for Ubuntu report? It sends a message to their telemetry servers anyway. It transmits opt-out equals true in JSON format, which still leaks your IP address and HTTP headers to metrics.ubuntu.com. <laughs> the preference saves per user account in your home folder, not system-wide meaning every user on multi-user systems must individually opt out or the machine keeps phoning home. 26.04 continues pushing snap adoption harder. App Center will manage deb packages directly, which sounds helpful until you realize, guess what? It's preparation for deprecating traditional package management entirely. They're migrating existing snaps to the core 24 base and automating snap updates for canonical maintained applications. The roadmap explicitly mentions making Snap applications feel fully native because users keep complaining they don't. The goal? It's obvious. Lock users into Canonical's proprietary Snap ecosystem where they control the store and can monetize distribution. Period. So what's the verdict? Look, Ubuntu 26.04 forces Snaps with automatic Snap Firefox reinstallation, nags about Ubuntu Pro through three separate advertising systems, three that can't be easily disabled, sends telemetry data to canonical servers even when you opt out, and pushes App Center deb management as a Trojan horse for snap migration. The LTS label promises stability, but delivers a platform designed to monetize users through forced ecosystem lock-in and constant subscription advertising. If this stopped you from learning the hard way, excellent. I investigate products so you don't have to. Discover these patterns after installation. Hey, Mark here. <clears throat> okay, look, I spend a lot of time investigating these products, and I'd rather not fill this channel with sponsored content from companies whose products I might roast next week. 
that would be awkward. If this review helped you out or saved you from wasting money, here's how you can support what we're doing. First, I've put the link to this product in the description. If you buy through my link, they toss me a few pennies without charging you extra. Win-win. Second, there's another link down there that goes straight to Amazon's homepage. Bookmark it and use it whenever you shop. Doesn't matter if you're buying this product or restocking on toilet paper. A tiny portion of what you're already spending helps fund these investigations. And trust me, Jeff Bezos won't even notice it's missing. It's the easiest way to support the channel without spending extra money. All right, that's it. Keep questioning everything, and I'll see you in the next investigation, where we figure out what's actually worth your money and what's just expensive garbage with good marketing. Stay savage out there.